Hey everybody, happy Friday. I missed you guys last week, but I hope you were able to spend some time celebrating your mom. And if you are a mom, I hope you were treated extra special. Last week, I closed out the Growing Pains series, which has four parts, so check those out when you get a chance, if you haven't done so already. So today, we're going to start another series entitled Rock Steady, and this will be a five-part series. There are four things about God that He wants us to settle in our hearts and our minds once and for all. So let's go ahead and jump right in. There's a very familiar hymn that we've all sang a time or two, or you know, maybe at least heard, and it's entitled, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. Now, don't worry, I'm not about to sing. You probably would click off this video if I did, but I will give you the first verse and the refrain of this hymn, and it goes like this. Verse 1, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. The refrain is, On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Today's lesson is entitled Rock Steady. And when I think of a rock, I think of something that is solid, is strong, it's reliable, it can withstand the weight and pressure. Now, no matter how much I weigh, I can sit, stand, and walk on a rock and not even break it. When people go rock climbing, they're putting all of their weight and all of their force on the rock without impacting the rock at all. And when it comes to being steady, it means that you are firmly fixed, not shaken or moving, you are constant. And I like the way Miriam Webster describes steady. It's being steadfast, firm in one's allegiance to something or to someone. God is our rock and he wants us to be steady in him, unwavering in the fact that he loves us, confident that he is always with us, assured that he is our defense, and persuaded that he will take care of us no matter what it looks like in our personal lives and whatever is going on in the world around us. Here are our four anchor scriptures for this series. 1 Samuel 2 and 2, the New International Version states, There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Deuteronomy 32 and 4, the New International Version as well. He is the rock. His works are perfect and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is he. Psalm 61 and 2, the New International Version. From the ends of the earth I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Isaiah 26 and 4, the New Living Translation. Trust in the Lord always, for the Lord God is the eternal rock. The word rock is mentioned in the Bible 187 times, and while not all of them are referencing God, there are quite a few that do. In Exodus 17, God provided a water fountain for the children of Israel. They were thirsty. There was no water in sight. So he instructed Moses to strike a rock. And when he did, their need was provided. In Deuteronomy 32 and 13, he once again instructed Moses to strike a rock that had honey in it to feed the people. And they got olive oil out of the ground. Now talk about a miracle. In Matthew 21, 42, Jesus is the rock that the builders rejected, and he became the chief cornerstone. Jesus emphasized in Matthew 7 and 24 how important it is to build our lives on the rock, which is him, to prevent destruction when the winds come and the floods come, because life is going to happen to all of us. I believe that there are four things that God wants us to be confident in and know like we know our name. God wants us to be unshakable in the fact that he loves us, he is with us, he is for us, and he will take care of us. God is our safe place, our protection, our soft landing, our confidant, the lifter of our heads, the God of all comfort. He gets it. He understands even when we can't find the words to describe what we're going through. 
When our heart is overwhelmed, because it will be sometimes, he invites us to run to him in our rawest form with all of our worries, our cares, our anxieties, and put it on him. Now, I may be frazzled and about to lose it, uncertain about what to do, but he is the rock. And the way he thinks is higher than my thinking and my reasoning or whatever it is that I'm worried about in the moment. I encountered something a few weeks ago that came out of nowhere, not something that I could prepare or plan for. It totally took me off guard and it was pretty significant to me. It would have caused a major disruption in my life. Now there had been quite a few obstacles happening, but this one was the straw that broke the camel's back. But I had to trust God for answers. He knew about it before I did anyway, so I had to rely on him to tell me what to do and trust him to fix it. And a few days later, the situation was worked out in my favor. And what I thought I would have to do, I didn't have to do any of it. And God was like, Leslie, I got you. I'm just trying to teach you to be steady in me, no matter what it looks like. And we must learn to be steady, a loyalty to God that is unwavering. We must know that he is our rock, our anchor. God can handle anything that we come up against. We don't know the strategy or have the inside scoop but he does. So no matter the situation we're facing, whether it's in our marriage, with our children, on our job, in our finances, our family or friendships, concerning our health and even our mind, we can stand on him with all of our cares, our questions, our worries, and our problems. He can handle it all, no matter how heavy it is, how heavy it is for us. Just like a natural rock, God can withstand the weight and pressure of our burdens. We can place it all on him and he can handle it with ease. Another thing that I love about God is that even if we've messed up, we can run to him, repent, and he will help us get back on track. He is full of love, mercy, and compassion for his children when we humble ourselves. The great thing is that we don't need anyone's permission, nor do we need to make an appointment to talk to God. 24-7, 365, he is available, and he's a great listener, a shoulder to cry on. His presence is so calming, and what's even better, he can handle my cares, your cares, and everybody else's all at the same time. Now, there's nothing wrong with getting support from people, having others pray for us. That is very effective and it's necessary. But the peace, strength, and answers that we need can only come from God. So let's get his perspective first. The enemy is trying to wear us out and wear us down as well to cause us to give up, to throw in the towel and feel like we have been forgotten. But let's be steady and stand on the rock because on the other side of our difficult days and our tough seasons will be a wow God moment. I believe that God wants us to seal and even cement these four foundational truths about him in our hearts. No matter what it sounds like, feels like, looks like, or even what's happening around us. We have to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God loves us. He is with us, for us, and will take exceptionally good care of us. Now, I know I haven't done an affirmation in quite a while, but this lesson deserves one. So let's personalize it. I want you to say this to yourself every day until we chat again next Friday. Even if you have difficulty believing it or your circumstances, you know, make you feel otherwise, keep saying it until you do. So point to yourself and repeat after me. God loves me. God is with me. God is for me. And God will take care of me. Thank you so much for hanging with me today. I appreciate you as always. If you're new, welcome. And if you're returning, thank you, thank you. Please consider subscribing while you're here. It is my goal to build a community of women who encourage and celebrate each other as we all become everything that God had in mind. And I'd love for you to join us. Any takeaways from today's lesson, please leave me a comment and I will reply. My website, podcast, and social media platform information will be in the description of this video. And join me next Friday for part two of the Rocksteady series with a lesson entitled Infinite Love. I know of a love that is unconditional. There's nothing you can do to stop it, mess it up, or cause it to end. So join me next Friday and we'll talk about it. In the meantime, remember that you matter. In Christ, you are enough. You are never alone. 
And most importantly, you are eternally and unconditionally loved. I'll see you next time. Take care. Oh,